Hey there folks, this is Double RPG here with another Two Cents video on the Two Cents block just for you. What you see me playing on screen is Castlevania Rondo of Blood that was released for the PC Engine in Japan back in October of 1993, and then it officially re-released itself on the PSP along with its remake, The Dracula X Chronicles. What you see me playing is the import release of this game off of the TG-16 from the Virtual Console. Although that Super Castlevania 4 is my favorite entry in the series, this may be my third favorite in the lineup of the classic format before the series became more famous for its Metroidvania-style gameplay that we have seen from Symphony of the Night to Order of Ecclesia and Harmony of Despair. What made this game so great was its use of taking high roads or low roads to traverse you to different levels depending on where you go. Even though you could do that in Castlevania 3, that feature was placed in between levels instead. This entry may not have the ability for Richter Belmont to whip in 8 different directions like Simon Belmont, but this is another solid entry that shouldn't be left alone. If you have a PSP, then pick up the Dracula X Chronicles as this game is a bonus within it. If you have a Wii, download it off of the Virtual Console as it ranges for about 900 Wii points because of it being an import. If you wanted to know where Dracula X truly was, then this is where you need to be. Okie dokie, on the two cents block as of today, Blitz Game Studio's own design director by the name of John Nash is under the impression that people are spending way too much time trying to figure out the specifications of the Wii U and not placing the focus on the games and the entertainment that is going to release this holiday season. Here are his words on this post. It's very easy for people to get hung up on hardware specs and technical specs. It's great to have a massive processor that's got a graphics pipeline that uses DirectX 11, but what people need to focus on particularly for games going forward is, what kind of experience can you build in the space of possibility afforded by the hardware in terms of features? Not in clock cycles. Does it connect out to the internet well? Does it connect to mobile well? How does it connect to your other friends and involve them in that experience? That's where games are moving forward. Nintendo's approach is to say, we're going to package that other screen with the console straight out of the box so there's nothing to worry about, and the developers have a stable platform, whereas maybe the other platform holders are saying, maybe we're going to involve other devices. That will bring another set of problems. Sony and Microsoft will go toe-to-toe -to -toe again as they have done on this rev. They will do the same on the next one. Nintendo are doing something different. It's not about beating everyone else in a surface shader processing clock speed war. That's not what they're about. They're about saying, we've got this great roster of IP, all these great characters. How do we build a piece of cost-effective hardware? They're a business. They've got to make profit. That will allow our players, our very loyal Nintendo players, to interact with this IP and great worlds and characters in a new way? If you think about the Wii U in that light, suddenly it makes a huge amount of sense. Suddenly we're going to be able to explore the world of Zelda and Mario in a new way with our friends. And that's the rationale behind that platform. It's not about a gunning war in terms of hardware. As soon as you do that, you start to think about the games in a different way. You start to get excited about what it affords you as a game designer, and players should get very excited about it as well. Very long quote, as I must say, but I agree with what he is saying. I mean, it's very nice that developers want to try and put in some more time and effort to take advantage of a console's full potential, but that experience should come after it launches. The reason why I say that is because it shows that they want to impress us with eye candy and nothing more. This is what it's all about ever since the days of the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Developers spent more time focusing on graphics and less on solid gameplay, and games with pretty visuals ended up being mediocre at best. Take a look at some of those games like The Death and Return of Superman, the official movie license games like Terminator 2 on the Super Nintendo, and even Sonic 3D Blast on the Sega Genesis. Of course, not all games get panned because of the visuals and less gameplay, as games like Super Mario RPG and the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy were prime examples of games that equaled themselves in both factions to deliver great experiences. Hence, this is why I see more of the indie games and the digital downloads end up being more appealing than most of the disc-based content that we have, because publishers are way too focused in wanting to encapsulate the consumer base with pretty graphics. This is why many of us believe that Final Fantasy XIII fell flat due to the overabundance of the cinematic visuals and shoddy gameplay. If you think Josh Nash believes that many developers and publishers spend way too much time with visuals, then you may be in for quite a surprise. The Tekken series head director Katsuhiro Harada has even stated the exact same thing. Here's what he said. People seem to be focusing too much comparing the raw specs to other hardware. You really have to be looking at the capabilities and what features it has. You see, this is why I have so much respect for Harada and many of those other top-notch developers like Shinji Mikami, Hideki Kamiya, Masahiro Sakurai, Notch from Mojang, Satoru Iwata, and especially Shigeru Miyamoto. They each go under the philosophy that games are meant to be fun, 
rather than just all about the presentation because if the game is clunky, then it won't be that fun to play. Hence, this is pretty much why I lost all respect to Microsoft and Sony as they have overpowered systems and how more consumers bought a Wii than the PS3 and the Xbox 360. You may give experiences to the hardcore gamer, but how are you going to appeal to both factions? Doing stuff like that and milking crap that we have already seen year after year or two is only going to lose interest from many consumers, and they can only tolerate so much. Those are my thoughts, but what about you? Are you under the impression that the Wii U may be all about the experiences and entertainment? Or do you think it's about something else? Make sure to leave a comment below to notify me of your own two cents, and be sure to rate this video and subscribe to my channel for more content coming from me in the future. This is Double RPG signing off, and thanks for watching.